with regard to the uh, the pub and offering serving alcohol on campus, uh, there's been an, an interesting history in terms of how that this this uh, entity has been implemented into the, into the new Union Building, and it actually started with uh, President Brad Bartel, who declared that he really wanted an on-campus pub, and it was greatly supported by the on-campus. Uh, students uh, and on all students of the college who, who want that sort of a venue offered uh, and uh, he actually, Brad Bartel actually acquired the, uh, the big neon light from the rocket drive-in and uh, which is going to be a big a big centerpiece, I guess, to the to the whole thing. This big neon light, say rocket. It's and it's actually going to be called the Rocket Grill, um, and it will be adjacent to the uh, to the theater, which is a, a large, probably 100 to 150 seat uh, theater uh, space, which is actually more of a black box. We can have bands, we can have DJs, we can have uh, just movies play. We'll have nice soft furniture in addition with uh, with hard furniture, you know, collapsible chairs, etc. It it also butts right up to the game room uh, or the rec lounge where we'll have pool tables, we're going to have uh, probably foosball and uh, and while you know much to I'm sure many people's uh, displeasure we are not having a bowling alley we are substituting a bowling alley with Wii bowling so we'll have a number of we're, we're hoping for between two and three large flat screen TVs with each each of them a gaming console of some sort and with Wii or maybe Xbox 360 or various other things that students can check out and that they will actually use so in terms of the issues surrounding some of the some of the concerns over a on-campus location serving alcohol, um, one of the concerns has been who's going to be allowed into the space. And what we what we've been able to work out is that so long as food is being served, which is one of the reasons why it's going to be a grill as opposed to simply a bar, is that as long as food is served you only have to check ID at the point of purchase. And by that means, we can actually allow anyone into the area, and only those people who are of age can purchase, as opposed to having a checkpoint at the door and thereby secluding the, or excluding the, the vast majority of the population of the school from the area. We're opening up to everyone, and those who can drink or have a beer are going to be allowed to do that. And we're going to bring in local, local brew pubs. We're, we're going to have... Uh, um, we're trying to really stick to on tap, uh, on tap available beers, but of course we'll also have uh, bottles, etc. Um, and and uh, in, in terms of where we stand on, of course we're for it. We think it's going to be just a, a, a great asset to this to this building, bringing in not just uh, of age students who who want to come in to have a beer, but or watch the game, but also faculty or community members or, or anyone in the area who who just wants to lay back, relax, or watch a movie, drink a beer, shoot some pool, whatever, and in a very very safe community. And and Nick here is actually going to talk about some of the other issues regarding. Uh, a, a dry campus, as we say. Right. Um, well, there is a lot of concern about the college endorsing an alcohol um, venue, um, and there, there, uh, and I do understand the perspective that s some students um, feel a little bit uneasy about it. Um, but I, I would challenge them um, to to realize that what is going to be implemented in here is is a um, a, a very um, C controlled environment where st where st underage students are not going to have the opportunity to be purchasing alcohol. We'll have highly trained people there um, to, to prevent that from happening. Um, also, I'd like to challenge the concept that Fort Lewis is actually a dry campus. Um, currently in the apartments, um, students are allowed to have alcohol um, frequently in the current union building. Um, probably on a, almost a weekly basis, there are liquor licenses allowed for different venues going on in the ballroom or in the sub cub. Um, also we've got um, the community concert hall which already has a liquor license which they actually dispense alcohol at concerts. So I, I, I think uh, that to kind of dispel the, the, the concept that there is no alcohol on campus already and this would be creating a whole new precedence. Um, I, I think what it would create is a great environment for students in the community to interact and, and probably most importantly is it, it encourages students such as I or anyone else who is living up on top of the Mesa, be it Hillcrest or here, is an alternative to going downtown. Um, I know a lot of students can have trouble finding a designated driver or such. By implementing this, you are giving students a venue in which they don't have to go downtown to, to consume alcohol if they wanted to go watch the game or something like that. So I, I, I think 
the net there's a lot more net positives to this, and I, I really fail to see very many um, negatives um, about this. And, and furthermore, if the college is really well, let me back up. One of, the, one of the goals of building a new union is to attract a greater student population. The, the goal of the college is to increase its student base from 4,000 roughly to 5,000, I mean, a 25% increase over the next several years. And the hope is that the new union will really uh, appeal to a lot of new uh, college age uh, graduates, high school graduates, and bring them in. But a concern of this is that it's that, uh, that populations are declining, yada, yada, I could go on a whole issue about that. But the college recognizes that they're going to have to cater a lot more towards upperclassmen or of age students living on campus. We had a couple of new, uh, uh, a couple of new student dorms or uh, residence halls that are being constructed or that will start this summer. And those are largely being, uh, being uh, gearing towards really uh, targeting uh, upperclassmen of age students uh, because they're much more situated as apartments as opposed to dormitories. And if that's the case, then we're going to have a, a, a shift in the percentage of of, uh, of age students living on campus. And if that's, a, a, again, as the logic follows, that then we'll have more people who are utilizing here rather than going down into town and then having to drive back. You can just walk across the street. So, and again, we're, we're for it and for obvious reasons.